recording and uh, we're gonna have Dan share the lesson for us tonight. So Dan, you can uh, take it away for the men's class. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm really excited just to get to talk to you guys um, just for tonight, just to get a, a fun lesson, uh, talk about something, uh, talk about a scripture and a, uh, a book in the Bible that, uh, man, I think it's, it's pretty prevalent. I think it's, it's a very applicable scripture, uh, book in, in today. And, uh, that's Job. It's a book of Job. Um, and I, before I get started, before I jump too far in, um, what do you guys know about Job? Uh, both the book or the man, any, anything and all of it's whatever, you know, what do you know? I mean, maybe uh, this is, oh, Joe. Go ahead, Carson. Okay. I say maybe this is kind of spark notesy, but I mean, more or less, like, he was a really solid guy, like, chased after God, and Satan comes along, and he's like, hey, I bet I can get him to come to my side, and he throws a bunch of crap at Job's life, um, and he gets kind of irritated with God, like, dude, why are you doing this? Um, and then, he, like, he stays faithful through it all, but it wasn't necessarily easy with everything that he ends up losing along the way. Martinez. Uh, he, he tried his best to be, uh, you know, on it spiritually. You know, he tried to be really focused and devoted and prayed up and just a good man overall. Love it. And I saw Adrian had in the comments, he said, faithful. Jesse, you, you, you're unmuted. What do you got, man? He was actually not a Jew, which is very unusual to um, tell the story of, to kind of hold somebody up as much as they did during, in the Old Testament. And, and he is not a part of, the, um, uh, of, the, of any of the tribes of Israel. It's true. It's true. There's a lot. There, 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 it's... So and that's actually a really good segue too. Um, so one, one thing that I think um, is really important to note about Job is because of the writing style, because of the way that the words that are used and the, the way the language is, is poetically written, um, a lot of scholars actually believe that this is the earliest written book in the Bible. Um, that it is, it is one of the first books actually composed. So that would be to say that the writer of it predates Moses. Um, now, that's not to say that he predates creation, right? But um, it's to say that this is a very early story and a very clear story about a man um, on the surface. It's the easiest way to put it. Um, what I think makes it really amazing is one of our earliest accounts of a man's relationship with God possibly the earliest account, earliest written account of man's relationship with God. The relationship was strained. The relationship was difficult. And quite frankly, things got really bad. And it's a hard lesson for us to learn as, as men. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like it is part of my life that when someone, great question, um, let, me, let me put this. I, I think that it is, it is significant for men for us to understand and, and uh, comprehend at some level suffering because as men, I think that it is very much a part of our burden to feel the suffering of everyone that we care about. Um, we as men all feel the drive and the desire to protect what is ours and to protect those around us. And when that failure happens, there is a very, very deep and sincere hurt that happens for us as men. Um, the question was, uh, let me just backtrack real quick. Uh, did he precede Abraham? So it, it's hard to say. Um, there, there is actually, so some scholars actually believe that uh, Jobab, um, which is in Genesis 10, 29, um, that Jobab is actually Job. Um, so that would mean that he was between Noah and Abraham. Um, I, 
the one thing I think is really important, and, and I, I stand by this with a lot of the poetry, um, and quite frankly, even in a lot of cases, a lot of the early Old Testament, um, unless, unless the writer wants you to know all of the, the family tree, there's a reason why it's not important. Um, there's, it's clear. Um, whoever wrote this story doesn't care about Job's history. Um, doesn't care about who Job's dad was. And you think about how many times in the Old Testament the father's mentioned. Um, but yeah, you can, go, you can go look for it for yourself about Jobab, uh, J-O-B-A-B, um, Genesis 10, 29. It's, it's hard to say. Um, and I don't think it's important. I think the really important thing is for us to realize that so much of this book um, is a part of the human condition. It's a part of what it means to be a man. It's a part of what it means to be us um, as who we are. Um, and in so many ways, we can relate to what he's going through. Um, but I want to jump right into it, and then I'll, I'll ask questions as we go, if that's okay. Um, can I get someone to read Job 1, verses 1 through 3? Anybody, anybody, anybody. Joe Martinez. Uh, Job 1, 1 through 3. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. All right, what do you see here about Job, guys? You know, pretty successful, you know, when it comes to, you know, what he has, as well as, you know, being mentioned as blameless and upright and, and, and God-fearing. He was extremely wealthy for the day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So he's wealthy, he's blameless. <clears throat> Do you notice anything different about Job's introduction? You know, the introduction to Job, think about just bigger picture Old Testament. I touched on it briefly. And I think mean, they just kind of just talked about his character as opposed to his lineage. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it there's no, think about, think about the Old Testament. Like, it, is, it is one of the hardest things to me about reading the Old Testament is the amount of times that I got to hear about and and every time I'm like, I just, I, I'm going to start making up names as I go. Like that stuff, I don't know why this means anything to me. God, couldn't we have had like a spark notes version of this or something? Come on, man. But it's, that's how with culturally, that's how vital it was to be able to track lineage. And here there's none of it. There's not even a mention of it. Land of us. I, we don't even know where that's at. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that you got to see him as blameless, successful. Now, blameless doesn't mean sinless, right? Blameless means that when, when, if somebody could not come to him and hold justice against him, say that he wronged anyone, both his servants, his animals, his family, and anyone else that's around him, they could not hold it against him. It's not to say he's sinless. The point is, he's a good man. And actually, in, in verses four and five, um, it, it talks about how when he would have feasts with his children, um, literally early in the next morning, consistently, he would wake up and he would sacrifice burnt offerings. He would have burnt offerings for his kids in the event they sinned. Not because of their sin, but just in case. This was a good dad. This was a good man. This was a righteous man. This was a pious man. 
This man was faithful to God. Right away, they want to start out and let you know who cares about where he's from. What you need to know is he's good. He's good and he's successful. Um, can I get somebody to read verses 6 through 12? I got you, Dan. Yeah, give, give, thanks, Ant. Okay, uh, six, let me find it here, four. Oh, geez. Okay, <clears throat> one day, I'm reading from the, uh, what version is this? The New Revised Standard. You're good. It said, one day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not put a fence around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand again. Uh, but stretch out your hand now and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, "Very well. All that he has is in your power. Only do not stretch out your hand against him." So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Why would God do this? Why would God? Why would God have this interaction? Why would God let this? essentially let Satan have his way. Why would God do that? It's not uncommon in the Bible for God to test people. It's true. He wants to try to make a point. He's making a point. Any, any, uh, any theories or yeah, yeah. You want to give on what point? Um, yeah. Um, I think something I think about is um, even I think with Joe being, I guess, the great man that he was, like, like who knew? I think God, maybe, like, a theory, I think, would be, um, I think a theory would be, like, who, um, like, how much greater of a man could he be once he, like, goes through the fire? I think how much greater of a man could he come? Like, how much more could he serve me? How much more could my name be glorified through him, you know, when like he it. tested like this? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Here, here's a spoiler alert, guys. We don't know. So that's going to be one big point we're going to have to go over here in this whole in, in this book, um, as I as I do a uh, not deep dive into this book. We don't get to know. One important thing to see here about Satan, though, um, and I, and it's a, it's a point like I, I it's like I'm I'm seeing a lot just in in reference to. Um, that I feel like I'm seeing a lot in, in reference to kind of the way the world is right now. There's a lot of good versus evil. There's God versus the devil. That's not the case. That's not how this works. It's not God versus the devil as if the devil has a chance. The devil has to present himself in front of God as one of many. He doesn't come to him as an equal and say, this is what I'm going to do and there's nothing you can do about it or fight me. Let's arm wrestle over him. He literally has to ask for approval. A lot of times we can inflate Satan's power. He's nowhere near the opposite of God though. It's not a yin and yang type of thing. It's not a good, it's not a, well, you know what? God is, uh, God's the, the Patriots and the Giants is Satan. Although if there were a team, it would be the Patriots to be Satan. But anyways, keep going. Um, and, and he says here, he says, everyone has their price. Everyone has their price. That's what the, the devil's point is like, yeah, he's pious because he's prosperous. Of course he's going to be loyal to you. Why wouldn't he be? Look how you've blessed him. Does Job fear God for nothing? I don't know about you guys, but I think I can do that as well. I can say, you know what? If I had more financial freedom, I'd give more. 
give more of my time, give more of my money. If I had more, I would give more. If I had more, I'd give it all in some situations. If I were rich, X, Y, and Z, I would be a better Christian. What follows is a, is a, is a bit of a mess, uh, quite frankly. Um, from between verses 13 through 18, Job's kids die. Um, they're killed. Um, and, and it says uh, a wind actually knocked over one of his son's houses and collapsed and killed his children. Um, the fire of God fell down from the heavens and burned up his sheep and his servants. Uh, the Chaldeans formed raiding parties and stormed and took all the rest of his livestock. He was robbed and pillaged and taken quickly. It all fell apart quickly for Job. Job lost everything. Still, Job says in verse 20, he says, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord uh, gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. He didn't sin by charging God. And so the devil, Satan, doesn't give up. And he keeps going. Satan ends up destroying and ruining and harming and boiling Job. To the point where Job is no longer a man. But I, don't, I actually don't want to spend any time on that. Um, I, I don't want that to be the focus. Um, I don't even want us to, to quite frankly, I, I don't want, if you want to do a deep dive on, on Job's suffering, it's bad. Um, and it's sad and it breaks your heart because for me, at least I, I'm like, I know people who have similar stories now who don't have a God to cry out to. And it, it just breaks my heart. It makes me feel broken. And, and then knowing that this man worships the same God that I do and knowing that I've cried the same cries that he has becomes very difficult. But I also don't want to talk about his weak religious friends who gave him advice. Um, he has three friends and then his wife. Uh, married brothers, do your best to try to keep your wife from ever being like Job's wife. Uh, her, her contribution is literally to tell him to curse God and die. Um, so God willing, none of you ever marry a sister of God who tells you to curse God and die. God willing. The story, though, is not about Job. Um, I, if you ask me my opinion, I think that Job wrote this story. I think that the man Job himself wrote it, and he wrote it with one specific intention, and that was to tell God's story, not his own. The story is far less about Job and far more about who God is. There is a very meaty middle that talks about religiousness. But the reality of these scriptures, of this book, is about God. God, God gets, uh, allows Job to get to the point where Job curses God and doubts him and, and, and expresses his unfair treatment. He puts it all out in front of God and says, you know what? At the end of the day, I am righteous. And, and it's important to know and to see, the scripture itself says that God said that to even Satan himself. He's righteous. He's a good guy. Now, it's not like me like being like, well, I didn't do anything wrong other than, you know, when I kicked AJ, but that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. Let's ooh, leave that out. Let's wipe that out. No, that's not the point. This, the, the big picture here is that this man was a good man and he suffered. And he brought that and he said that to God. I didn't deserve this. You are unjust, God. You don't really care. You're too big. You're too bored with me. I am, I am, I am an ant and you are a child with a magnifying glass. And then God reacts. Like I said, this book is about God and suffering. Um, I, I am going to ask quickly just one scripture apiece from a couple of people, if you guys don't mind. Um, Jesse, could I get you to read Job 38? 
verse four. So God's about to come off and he's about to say his exact opinion and exactly where he stands when it comes to him and Job. So Job 38, verse four. Uh, he says, where were you when I laid the, found, the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Okay, can I get somebody to read? Let's see, Brawley, will you read 38, verse 8? Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? Ryan, can I get you to read verse or chapter 38 verse 34 sure. can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water uh carson can i get you to read verses 39 19 uh yeah give me one sec to get there yep you're good Do you give the horse its strength or clothe its, or yeah, or clothe its neck with a flowing mane? And finally, can I get the aunt, the younger, to read verse 39, or chapter 39, verse 27? 27? Yeah. <clears throat> it says, does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? Chapter 40, verse 8, it says, would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Now, actually, you know what? Hold on. I want to backtrack because you want to talk about like scary. Here we go. Just the beginning of, so we're going to do Job 40, verses 1 through 9. The Lord said to Job, will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. Then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Oh, by the way, he showed up as a storm. And he said, brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you will answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's? And can your voice thunder like this? God gets aggressive here, guys. He gets aggressive. He doesn't get aggressive because Job is suffering. He gets aggressive because Job shot at God. Job went at God. Job questioned God. And from God's viewpoint, that needed to be corrected. What does this say about God? I think it says he's ready to answer us. Go ahead, Mike. I would say, I think there's also, when you look at all these different verses, he's in control. Like, he's... He's coordinating all this. Like he, he's the man <laughs> making sure everything happens that we don't realize he's doing it. Yeah. yeah. He's showing the complexity, right? It's more than just you, Joe. It's more than just you. Anyone else? I think I, I get from it like he's willing to allow us <laughs> to speak our minds but he will lay down the truth when it needs to be laid down. And so he, he, he doesn't, he doesn't pull punches. He will tell it like it is and put things in its right place as they need to be. But, you know, he does allow us to kind of say our thoughts, but uh, that whole brace yourself like a man, I will question you. That's real talk right there. That's I imagine a storm cloud saying that to you. <laughs> like, like, I just, that's bonkers to me. Like, I just picture myself, like, going for a walk, and then, like, a cloud is just hanging overhead, like, you, like, oh, I'm, I'm, yep, I'm just gonna, you know what, my wife got the second part of that right, I'm just gonna die, it's just, I just gotta, uh, I'm, I'm over. I, 
I think, I think it's, it's really important for us to see, like, you know, we talk a lot about God as our father, right? God is our father. As a, as an infant child, I have, I have a toddler, right? I have a eight, 16, 14 month old, some more than one year old baby who's been around for a while, who purposely does wrong things. And now he finds joy in being, being a stinker. He loves it. Um, I don't yell at him because he's a baby, but I have to correct him. He's a baby. If I get in his face and I were to scream at him, his whole world would be broken. It would harm him. AJ, on the other hand, there have been times where AJ and I are going at one another, where we're having a very candid, real and heavy conversation, where there's some very distinct parenting that's involved. And at that point, I, I often, I, there have been times where I've had to remind him, hey man, you, you, ain't, you ain't dad. You're not dad here. You're not the one who's the boss here. Slow your roll. That chest that's inflated, yeah, you, bet, you better take a step back. It's important. God still is going to be willing to have that type of conversation with us. God is going to be willing to say, listen, I want you to come to me and I want you to tell me how you feel, but please understand that it will go both ways. That I will also tell you how I feel. That is what a relationship is. If we are to have a relationship with God, we have to be willing to hear what he has to say. And sometimes what he has to say, quite frankly, cool off or deal with it. I love you, but you're going to have to deal with it. My plan is significantly bigger than anything you can understand. We've heard scriptures our, our, our entire lives, our entire spiritual walk. We've heard scriptures how my thoughts are not your thoughts. Here you go. Job is, Job is being told, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You are no closer to me, Job, than the east is to the west. Slow your roll. But Job has a, has a reaction now, especially after God tells him, to face me like a man, which I'm just now, that is what I'm going to say to my baby tomorrow morning when he tries to hit me. I'm going to be like, listen here, baby, face me like a man. I don't believe you have a name until you're eight years old. Man, that's when I give you a name. Right now, he's just baby. Just kidding. Um, all right, Job 42, uh, verses one through six. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? <sighs> Surely I spoke of things I do not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears have heard you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Why does Job react this way, guys? Why does Job react this way? Scared? Scared, okay. He's been humbled. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I guess I look at part of it like he's reflecting back to God, like things that he said. I know it's like communication in general, like it helps to know, like if you reflect something back to them, like, hey, I heard you say this very specific thing. Um, I mean, if he's saying like, God, like I heard you, like I don't, I don't need it again. Like I'm, I'm here. I heard you. I'm sorry, <laughs> let me fix this. Absolutely. I like how verse five says, my, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. 
Yeah. And I feel like there's just like a complete picture and an understanding that's there. That back in the day, there might have just been like a, a high level understanding or, you know, a lot of a disconnected or an incomplete understanding. But now it has been made absolutely clear and complete about who God is and, and how he and who he is in relation to God as well. I like, I like verse three where he says, you know, basically, I spoke things that didn't understand things too wonderful for me to know. Like beforehand, he has this perspective of like, God, you're a jerk versus now he's like, oh, wow. I, it's actually, it's too wonderful for me to actually understand. Yeah. Like he truly like, he's, he's kind of, you see the realization of his place in God's world. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't have to know the answer beforehand. He, he had to know it. Now he's like, I don't, I don't need to know. <laughs> so. I love that. So um, there is a there's a Christian rapper named Andy Minio. Um, I don't know how much you guys know. I love Andy Minio, man. Um, Andy Minio has a song called Clarity. Um, I it's so I never really liked Christian rap. Um, I still not a huge fan. I like him. Um, I, I actually don't really enjoy like some of the other guys. Um, but this clarity song, the first time I heard it, I, I, I cried. Um, it affected me in a very distinct way because the song, the, the premise of the song is basically doubt is healthy. That questioning God and, and going after God about things you don't understand, it's healthy. It's healthy to have that type of relationship. You should have relationships with people where you're not worried about losing the relationship where you're capable of going to God and saying, God, this doesn't make sense, but then capable of listening for his answer. I've heard of you, but now I see you. I see you. I see you because I've opened my eyes in a way that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to. He was blameless before, and now he's stronger. Um, really important to note there too, uh, in, uh, verse six, where it says, I despise myself. Um, Carson, kind of what you were it actually alludes to what you were saying. Um, so it's not, it's not like the, it's not the woe is me. I hate myself. That's not what's happening here. That's not what he's saying. Um, actually the more accurate way for it to say would be like, I despise the words that I said. I despise the way I felt. I despise my expression. I'm sorry that I opened my big stupid mouth because what I said was wrong. Like it, it's really important for us to differentiate between woe is me. And I can't believe that I felt this way. Um, that is godly sorrow. I was wrong and I want to make it right. And how does he want to make it right? What is his reaction? It's to repent. It's not fear. It's conviction. Um, as we wrap up, the, the, the one point I, I wanted to just emphasize here um, is God is not a teddy bear. Um, we're, we're, in, we're in the middle of one of the most trying times of any of our lives. Um, and it makes it even harder because we're all faced with it. God's not a teddy bear. He's not simply a teddy bear. He's not simply a genie in the bottle. Um, God's also not karma. Um, you know, that's a popular word to use. And it's like, that's not, that, that's not karma. Karma's not, karma actually doesn't live down the same street as God. God's God. God's plan, significantly bigger than ours. God's vision, better than ours. Um, so I know we're going to break up into groups. I actually wasn't very long, Mike. I'm very proud of myself. Hope you're proud of me too. Um, we're going to break up into groups. I have two questions, guys. Um, one, how can you find comfort in Job's story? And then two, how can you help comfort others because of that? So one, how can you find comfort from Job's story? And two, how can you comfort others? Really appreciate it. Um, hopefully it wasn't too heavy and too messy, guys.
Awesome, Dan. No, that was great. That was great. I saw, um, I think everyone really enjoyed it, at least from my reactions or from what I could see everyone in their faces and some of the comments. So um, no, I think that is a, it's a timely uh, lesson for what we're, what we're going through right now, um, to what we're facing and whether it's that or we're going to face other things too that give us opportunities to question and doubt God um, or why something's happening to us. So, um, so let's, let's break up into some groups. Um, and uh, let's 